Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Endangered Rappers. More and more, it seems hip-hop artists are losing their lives in armed robberies and senseless shootings. Many of you keep asking us, why is this happening? So we're taking a close look into whether it's something within hip-hop culture or a byproduct of the national crime wave that's sweeping so many cities. Fans gathered in Los Angeles to mourn the passing of 30-year-old hip-hop artist PMB Rock. The Philadelphia native was shot and killed September 12th while out to lunch with a woman at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in South Los Angeles. The LAPD says a two-man robbery crew shot him multiple times and took his jewelry. 40-year-old Freddie Lee Trone and his teenage son are now under arrest and charged with PMB Rock's murder. He was an artist artist. Uh, he knew all the upcoming artists. He always reached out. He had a a uh, outstanding rapport with the hip hop community. PMB's murder in Los Angeles was eerily reminiscent of the 2020 armed robbery murder of 20 year old Pop Smoke in the Hollywood Hills. Police say that crew was tipped off by a social media post with a street address. However it's done, there's a certain mentality driving it, says hip hop star Jim Jones. It's an ignorant thing. It starts with the house, it, start, it starts with being at home. It starts, with, it starts with broken homes. Kids don't have too much things to look forward to. The, the survival element of everything growing up in the neighborhood. Um, something that people have that they don't have and the only way they feel they could get it is by taking it and not working for it. In 2020, more than a dozen prominent rappers lost their lives, most to gun violence. Compare that to what the government ranks as the deadliest professions. Loggers with 56 deaths and roofers with 96 deaths. One study found jazz and blues singers have the longest lifespans into their 60s, while male rap and hip-hop artists have the shortest, under 30 years of age. The cause of death of more than 50% of hip-hop artists and rappers was homicide, compared to under 6% for metal, country, blues, and jazz artists. Many rappers come from under-resourced and dangerous urban communities where violence is too often a part of everyday life. The labels are culpable a little bit. I mean, a lot, actually. Uh, I think they're signing a certain type of artist that's um, controversial, potentially uh, already engaged in criminal activity. The list of murdered rappers is long. In November 2021, Memphis hip-hop artist Young Dolph was shot and killed buying cookies for his grandmother. In May of 2019, Nipsey Hussle was gunned down right in the L.A. community he was working so hard to uplift and empower. In February 2022, Pop Smoke protege T. Dot Wu was shot and killed right after signing a record deal. I would just love for us to start leading with talent first. And, you know, if controversy comes, that's cool, but it can't start there. We've got an artist, a record label executive, and a hip hop journalist to break this all down for us. So let's get to it. Joining me is Bobby Fisher. He's the vice president of A&R for Empire Records. Bobby, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. We appreciate it. Also with us is Chuck Creekmer. He's the CEO of allhiphop.com and the co-founder. Chuck, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. And also with us is Jim Jones, El Capo. Um, you see him on season six of The Drip Report, which is coming out this fall. He's also working on new music and many, many other TV and music and entertainment projects. Yeah. And also continuing to do his thing in the community like he did way back when on his very first appearance on Street Soldiers. So, so Jim, great to have you back and great yeah, to have all of you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jim, you have been quoted so many times by so many people saying that rap is the most dangerous profession. Can you break it down for us? What do you think? Um, I mean, I said this a few years ago, way before the pandemic had, had happened, um, I started to notice the increase in violence that were happening towards rappers. Um, and it just started increasing and increasing. And now it's to the point where is 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 one of one for every rapper that makes it a rapper dies. It's a fifty. It's a fifty percent statistics for rappers. You have a fifty percent chance of living if you would like to be a rapper. Um, that's not a great statistic. That's a f up statistic. We shouldn't even be talking like that when you look at it. Um, 
and it's sad to see what's going on because it's, it, it's, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be an upcoming rapper. It could be a very seasoned rapper. It could be one of your favorite rappers. Like at this point, it's disgusting. There was a point in time where I felt like the communities were protecting the rappers. I felt like they held, the held rappers in high regard and things like that. All of the regard is out the window. Um, I'm actually scared for 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 a lot of us um, because of what's going on, and I urge everyone to stay as safe as possible. I know staying safe nowadays means you have to do some things that probably don't fit inside the law book and to protect yourself. So, any way you turn is bad for the artists nowadays. You know what I mean? So, I just hope everybody stays safe just as much as they can. No, exactly, Chuck. When you look at the uh, the murder of PMB Rock shocked a lot of people because they were like okay as he was as jim described a season you know a season rapper he'd been out there and then to have this happen what was your reaction when you heard about that i mean i was definitely shocked you know pmb is from philadelphia i'm originally from delaware so i was um you know tuned in uh, from that perspective but it was shocking you know it was a broad day it was in Roscoe's. I know it was obviously in a in an area where it's it's known for that type of stuff, but you know, it was still shocking. He was with his family, his girl, his lady, and obviously some things happened, possibly dropping locations. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, whether you're dropping a location or whether you're um, being stalked, you know, it still means someone's following you and targeting you. Um, I don't think that location, I'm, everybody keep talking about this location, man. I pray for that lady for all the trauma that she just went through. Um, but you're an artist. Anywhere you go, anybody knows who you are. It don't matter. Yeah, it I don't agree. matter. I pop up outside anywhere, capo outside. Anybody can get on the phone. You can see that from a mile away. Um, and the fact that us as Black people are going to a restaurant to eat some food and enjoy ourselves with our lady or our family and things like that, we should be able to do that without having to worry about if our life or if it's going to get taken from us or if we're going to get robbed. Like, things are backwards nowadays. I agree 100%. Bobby, what, Bobby, what, what about what about this point? Because it, it's like you can't, if you want to have a rap career, you have to be out there. And like Jim said, people know everybody, you know, they, they know you when they see you. No matter, you know, you could just be going about your daily business and somebody else could put it out there that you were here or they saw you there. Or, or whatever. What what about that? Because the social media is so important, but it's also very dangerous. Uh, in the words of Jim Jones, you have to move tactical as much as possible. Being an artist, um, I agree with Jim and Chuck. Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you drop your location or not. Once you're outside, you you're you're that artist, and it's hard for that that light switch to switch off, especially when you're with you, with your friends and loved ones. Back in the day, if you're around your friends and loved ones. The fans, the critics, they'll stay back. Like, hey, look, he's with his family. Nowadays, the lines are kind of blurred. The lines of respect is is a completely across the board, and um, it's 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 definitely unsafe for the modern day artist, or even or any type of artist to even be outside. You know, um, you have to keep your head on a swivel at all times, and it, it's a sad state that we're living in that you can't even enjoy yourself with your family. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And I'm not perfect, and I'm not no angel. But I try to give back way more than I took, because I know I took a lot in my life. And they say, when you give, you get. Chuck, in terms of what the culture wants, people, people, the violence is is the thing that seems to be selling, and the thing that that seems to be the most popular. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to say what the culture wants, you know, because uh, I think the culture is approaching 50 years old. You have several generations and you have different mind states and different people um, that want different things. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I just want the greatness of hip hop and the talent to be the, the main thing. I don't want to see people dying uh, in, in this culture like this. I want to see people prosper. That's what hip hop was created for, for us to find a way when there was no way. Um, I want our young artists to know that they can live past 21, 25, and they don't have to do it the way that a lot of them are doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, we all know that this world, you know, the deck is stacked against us. You know what I mean? And so we're made, I feel like we're making it harder for ourselves in, in these types of situations. And, and last thing I want to say is that, you know, we always have to keep 
our mind on what's happening outside of hip hop, because that's really what we need to to really home in on. There's no after school programs. There's no arts programs. There's no business programs in this day and age. Why wouldn't people know how to do learn how to do business in high school? So there's a lot of different things. Kids don't necessarily want to go to college or um, or a trade school or whatever. So they want to rap. Bobby, in terms of the in terms of the, the deaths of rappers, a lot of people ask about Empire. Why were there so many like four? Four Empire artists that have been have been murdered, at least four. More than four. Pardon me. It's more than four. More sure. than, what do you What do you say to that? Because this, I want to give you a chance to address that because this keeps coming up on social media too. It comes up in all of our, you know, in all of our meetings whenever we talk about this topic. What do you What do you say to that? How do you explain that? Well, I mean, I I pride myself of working with a company that prides itself in entre entrepreneurship owning masters and prosperity. We, Empire is one of the first front-leaning labels that have changed, changed the perspective on deal structures. Um, you know, Jim is a contestant to that. We've helped build more entrepreneur, multimillionaires than probably any other company. It, it's definitely unfortunate what's happening um, with, 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 you know, some of our artists that, that are no longer here um, due to sense of violence. Um, I, I, you know, it, it, it kind of hurts it's disappointing when you start seeing the cons conspiracy theories. That's, you know, that's, it's, 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 it's pretty disgusting. Um, and I always tell everyone, you know, everyone's a conspiracy theorist until you're in a conspiracy, until they mention your name, right? right. And then you understand how bad it feels. Um, and, and my heart aches to any other company or any manager or fans of families who, who dealt with, uh, you know, with tragic losses. And, you know, it comes with rumors and speculations, but you know, at our company, we pride ourselves at making sure that our artists are safe at all times. And we try our best. You can't watch someone 24 hours a day, especially if you're going out to buy a motorcycle or if you're going to buy cookies for your mom or, you know, you're doing something constructive, you, you, don't, you don't think your life's going to end. That's not, that's not something that, you know, in these situations didn't happen in the line of them doing music. They were doing ordinary things that ordinary people do. And, right. um, you know, I, I think that's unfortunate that, uh, you know, there's the blame game. I, I think that the bigger issue is, is making sure that we keep all of our artists safe as much as possible moving forward. I, I, I think the Empire gets, I think Empire gets a bad rap. Um, every label goes, has these certain same things going on. But for the most part, I think people used, need to really tip their hat. I, I always commend Ghazi for what he's doing because he's take the time out to take the risk on high risk artists or, putting artists up or give an artist a chance to really help themselves. Like he's helped so many artists better they positioned than most of these record labels. And he's given these artists a fair chance at success. Uh, he prides himself on taking care of his artists. I see him fly to so many different places just so that he can make sure the artists are okay. And like Bobby said, no, we can't watch people 24 seven, nor are we babys babysitters at record labels and things like that. But for the most part, I know that empire for me being there, uh, phew going on more than 10 years right now. Um, I've known what they've done for me and what they helped me doing every day, how they helped me attack my goals was, as far as my me turning into a successful artist and a businessman and things like that. Like, like they did for all of that. I would say for all the labels that I have been involved in, Empire is probably the most sound label. I get paid on time. They have a responsible staff that looks after the artists. They on top of their ball game. And I've been around the block a few times inside of this record business. And I would say they probably one of the most fair labels that I've ever dealt with. I'm not talking about artistic license because I believe in free speech, but I'm talking about when you have rappers as we've seen, and there's court cases. I mean, I can show you indictments. There's, there's court case, if there's young artists who are expressing their creative, you know, it, it's a creative right to express it. They're talking about killing real people who end up getting killed. They're showing the, they're showing the weapons, the locations, all of that in the video, basically handing prosecutors a case on a silver platter with everything right, right done like that. But it's all very real. They're calling out real people. And then there are real acts of violence that match up with that. So Bobby, how is that creative? How is that creative expression? It's a fine line between reality and, and, and creative expression when it comes to hip hop. You know, the 
the rule number, the rule as, as a human being, remove my executive hat and hip hop, is to make sure that the artists can create, creatively express themselves and not harm themselves or anyone else. That's the goal, right? There are things that are out there that are questionable. I can't speak on stuff that that's that's being brought up in court. I'm not involved in those. No, right? but have you ever have you ever stopped? Have you ever said to an artist like, "Listen, you're you're calling out so and so right here. This is whatever you you, you know you're I, saying you're gonna go kill his mom." I always tell the artist to be mindful of what they say because anything repercussions can come back at you. At this at the same time, I I can't say yo take that lyric out, but it's like yo be mindful of what you say. Because it can be it can be used against you, or it can cause bodily harm to someone else. But be mindful of what you what you put on that. Be mindful of what those vocals get on that tape. I do, I do. We we have those conversations, but at the same time, a, an artist has a right to to create. No, absolutely, it's a I, fine I, I, line. No, I absolutely it's, believe that. It, I'm just asking though. I've you, seen examples yeah. where it's super specific, and people are dead. You know. I mean, those, are, those, those, those cases, yes, we have those cases, but it's like, we can't, like, I, like how can I put this? I, I hate to sound like a hypocrite, and I ain't trying to be the pot to paint the kettle black. Um, We're up against a lot. And some kids, we would say, are doing way too much when it comes to their music inside of this whole drill era. Um, But then there's a whole side of the drill where kids are talking about drilling and not necessarily talk about the killing. There's a whole lifestyle that comes with it and things like that. You know, there's a two-edged sword. We were coming up. We were we were up against the same thing. We were gangster rappers. We were right. dips. We were gangbangers. They're no good. They also, like you, you understand like every step of the way there's going to be that. There's going to be a new music coming up that we don't approve of. There's going to be violence that's attached to it that we don't approve of. And we'll sit here in the media and talk about all of the things that have been going on before we got here today. And because we have social media where we can see it all day, that's the big difference. But there were loads of crime and violence going on this whole time inside of hip hop. And the most we're doing is sitting on these platforms and talking about it and nobody's coming up with solution or even trying anything to see if it's going to work in helping these kids make it out of these situations or giving these kids some hope or some inspiration to become an artist to help their people get out these situations. We got to choose to lead by example at some point. And that's why everything that I try to do, I try in my later years to lead by example, and I'm not perfect and I'm not no angel, but I try to give back way more than I took because I know I took a lot in my life. And they say, when you give, you get. And I feel that like my duty right now is to give as much as I can, whether it's to artists or whether it's to the same hoods that I came up from or whether it's knowledge that they could take with them and use later on that it get them out of some that they might have not had that knowledge. They might have put themselves in a whole line of fire. I think we need more solution than talking about how we tearing each other down. Let's talk about how we figure out how to build this shit up. I love you know? that. I love and, that. And also, Lisa, just to add on, you know, so you know, a lot of the artists are living vicariously through their environment, right? Are we demonizing them because they they're telling what's what they're expressing what's happening, and then they're automatically being demonized? I think we're not even giving our these young artists even a chance to even develop and grow and evolve. Imagine we were minusculing Jay-Z's lyrics on Reasonable Doubt. I don't even think we'll have the Jay-Z today. It, it, it's a fine line. We're, no, we're doing, I mean, and we've, we've had drill artists on, up and coming drill artists on Street Soldiers. It's, it's so popular. It's such a, it's a huge, huge movement. It's a world, it's a worldwide it's, movement. It's great, it's great music. music. Let's get that. It's great music. When we were coming up, when we were coming up, Dipset, the older crowd didn't understand it. They were blaming us for all type like that but it was great music and these kids have found something else it's called drill and it's like the fountain of youth to new york hip-hop and it's great music do we have pieces in it that these kids need help and things like that yes of course but they found great music and they found how to put food on their table they found out how to make money to support their family they found out how to a way to get themselves out of the circumstances that they're in right now and that is the hood and everything that comes with it and that's everything that we see going on with the music the killings the violence and the social media and but that drill music as crazy as it may seem is their way out
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Endangered Rappers. You can share it and watch it again on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.